Is anybody there? We got an empty seat. No. Hey, Kelsey. Bruno, what happened to the beard? I I take it all back. <laughs> it was I got ready for November beard. Yeah, well, I was already having a really good start, but I failed when I decided to cut it off. No, you, did you watch the meeting yesterday, David? Uh, no. Oh, no, you are, you're so lucky. You would have lost some brain cells. <laughs> uh, I, I, I decided to be okay with doing a video, which when I looked at the video, I realized it seemed more like a propaganda video that I got myself involved in. <laughs> it was it was just embarrassing. But I figured a big bushy guy is probably not the best thing on a video to tell the public why we're spending more money. Uh, so I just <laughs> kind of cut things back and now I take it all back. I don't want the video and I want the beard back. <laughs> Hey, so I, I got a, I got a problem with you, David. Uh, uh, you're trying to get me to sign up with Dropbox, where they're asking me for my credit card, or else I can't get to your folder. So I can't. Really? Get file. Is there any other way? Is there any other way to get that file from you? I mean, I yeah. could, but I just I'm 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 resistant. No, absolutely. Um... The internet always wants my credit cards, and I'm always looking for free stuff, and that becomes a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can hey, listen. just hey, make this so, public. Um, I think we're waiting for um, Vice Mayor Sluton is here. He's in the office. Uh, he and Alan are getting set up in Alan's office. Yeah, that was the empty chair. So we, we've got some remodeling going on in the council chambers. So um, otherwise, normally you'd see us all at the table. Right. I noticed it in the background of the city council meeting. It uh, looked it's, like it was in uh, transition. It's m it's much much worse before it much gets worse. better. Much <laughs> worse. <laughs> Can't wait to see the whole thing. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I, I take it it's because your file was humongous. Correct. Correct. What kind of I file mean, is it? it it's uh, it's the same file that um, Melissa sent over. I can't yeah. find that one. It's the JPEGs, I think. Melissa disappeared. I looked for Melissa's thing and I could not find it. I'm I'm uploading it into a Google Drive right now. So hopefully you already have your credit card in for that. I got my credit card at Google everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> they know me. You guys hear, hear us? Can you guys hear us? You know me? It's a, it, it's a little hollow, but yes. Oh, okay. Look, there's Alan <laughs> in the background. Maybe I should go out there someplace. It might be echoing them. Is there a... Um, we like have everything going up right now. I don't know where to tell you to go. Um, Just a chair. Well, you hear go in, in uh, here. Turn this off. Oh. I just don't know about that view. <laughs> no, he's collect coffee cups. Yeah. It's like a little okay, guys. All uh, right, do we have, uh, I guess we have a quorum. Let's see. Yes. That's okay, I don't need to see them. I just need to be. I think before we start, we should talk about that video a little bit more, Bruno. I heard you talking about it. I take it all back. Don't forget the beard. <laughs> <It's a mistake. laughs> Yes, the poor beard also got hit with that. I'm just going to eat croissants out of depression. Mm, <laughs> no chocolate drizzle, it's not enough depression. <laughs> mm, I got to pace myself. <laughs> Both on the chocolate and the depression. <clears throat> mm. 
All right, I think everybody's here. And it's uh, two, what is it? it's five minutes after two, so we'll call this meeting to order. Uh, roll call, please. Um, member Claffey? Here. Uh, member for the Clear Lake Chamber of Commerce, Chelsea. Here. And member Codling? Here. And Chair Sluton? Present. And I don't see Vice Chair Overton present. All right. Um, let's look at the Agenda. First item is first item is marketing survey. Hey, Alan, can you unlock my screen? Sharing capability. Well, it's probably going to have to be Melissa, but let me try. Oh, here we go. Maybe I can do it. Try that. Beautiful. Okay, so I, I put together some draft questions that we can uh, chat about here. I know uh, there's a lot of fingers out there in the business community, so I want to make sure that we're not gathering information that's already being gathered in some form or fashion. Um, the first three questions I pulled from the prior iteration of the, the chamber survey, and I thought they would best apply to this. Um, and, and chamber folks, you guys can let me know if these are the questions you do want to ask. But essentially, how long have you been a member of the Clearly Chamber of Commerce? Um, there's a time span here. I also added a field for not a member because I think we want to distribute this fairly widely and, and get uh, not necessarily just chamber folks. Uh, the next question was, how satisfied are you with the Clear Lake Chamber of Commerce? Um, that has a satisfaction rating, uh, basically five stars, but we don't, we have it characterized this way so that we can get more honest answers. And then another question on the, on the old survey that I thought was appropriate was, what would you like to see the chamber devote more resources to? Uh, and then Patrick had added ribbon cuttings, um, mixers, board members getting out and talking with business owners. So I thought those three would be good to carry over. Any any thoughts mm -hmm. or, or comments there? I think, Looks good to me. I think that's great, David. Come All right. Chamber. All right. So then I, and I kind of broke these up. We don't have to have these titles on there. They can all just be either one mass or we can segment them. But essentially, how would you rate the, the health of the Clear Lake business community? Uh, that would be the, the satisfaction rating similar to the one above here. Um, what type of growth do you expect in the next year? And, and these are all, I'm asking these questions so that we can see a trend over time as well, right? So you know, are, are our business owners feeling good about the current climate? Do they feel like their business is in a place to succeed? If we do this in 2021 and then do it in 2022, like these, these are evergreen questions that we can ask year over year and really chart the progress. Um, what is your customer split? I think this is important for the marketing committee. What is your customer split between local and out of county? And then we can have some percentage options there. And then a, an open text field that asks where your out of towners coming from. So, you know, maybe the bait and tackle shop has folks coming from Sacramento, but the, mm -hmm. the clothing shops have folks coming <laughs> from, you know, Reading. I don't know. And I think that that's an opportunity for folks to enlighten us. Um, what business focused initiatives would you like to see the cities and the county, uh, sorry, misspelling here, but essentially what, what initiatives, business focused initiatives would you like the city to devote more resources to? I left this as an open text box just to see what type of answers we get. And then where do you go to learn about information and resources for small business owners? And I have some options there, which may not be complete. Um, so I'd love some input if possible. I have a, a, a suggestion. Mm -hmm. 
because uh, I think that businesses start from nothing. It starts with an idea. And then what I know is, and the city's really working hard on this. I believe the county's working hard, but I think the city's much further along, is how friendly is the city planning or is the city to uh, uh, be conducive for more businesses to be here? How, how, how friendly is that interaction between the city and uh, the business? Because I think that whether it's the interaction with the police department to feel like their businesses are kept safe or their interaction with being able to grow their business and get their use permit, I think that's always good information to get a, a, a feel of how people feel of uh, the uh, collaborative relationship. So I, 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 th I think I, I, I addressed that at a very high level with this first question, but do we want to dive into that level of, of specificity? And then if so, what are those questions? Is it going to be city planning? Is it going to be interaction with law enforcement? Um, it, it, it's certainly info that we, we could use, right? Because I saw that question with a different answer, with a different perspective. Right. Like, yes, it's healthy because I have vibrant neighbors that have a lot of people coming by, uh, a lot of traffic, and so I, I, I'm able to be successful. Um, but I think that there's a process before bec becoming a business that in the past was a very negative reputation in both the county and the city of Clear Lake, and that has been evolving. And I think it's something to keep your our fingers on to make sure it's always evolving. Okay. But that's just me. So I, I captured city planning, law enforcement, any other areas of, of interest that we can build uh, out I a question for? You should, you should also include, uh, add um, city and county uh, of Lake, um, Lake County also. Uh, there, or you want to be more specific or not? I'm, I'm, I, th I think when you do get into to planning and law enforcement, it, yeah, it goes a little bit beyond Clear Lake, right? Um, so, Especially so, if you're doing, if you're talking about a restaurant, then they're dealing with county for public health uh, or environmental health stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's not always the city, and maybe not saying city and county, maybe saying local government uh, that way. But I don't yeah, know. Like, yeah, local government um, permitting process, or um, you know, something that captures. How hard it is to get through the bureaucracy of the both the city and the town. Okay. Then whatever grade you get, you just add two because people already have a negative perception, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll do satisfaction questions for planning, uh, permitting, law enforcement. Anything else we'd I want will, to add? Oh. Well, I will say one thing. We want to be careful that we don't make it too long because if it's yep. too long, they just look at it and go, I don't want to do this. So, I mean, I think we need to make it succinct and, and so that we can get the answers we want. But I think we, we can't get too wrapped up in making it too long or you're going to lose people. Yep. Just my opinion. I agree. So I, can, can I ask a question? Of course. Um, I don't know if you guys talked about this before and I wasn't at the, <laughs> you know, at least the last meeting. Um, what's the like rollout plan on this survey timing, that type of thing? Uh, so the, we had discussed launching this the, the first month of 2021 and then having that be sort of the recurring time that, that we put this out. Um, that's dependent on us getting these questions together and, and the chamber uh, being able to facilitate that timeline, but I think it's doable. Okay. Well, that, that probably would be okay. My only concern was, um, you know, there's some effort through the EDC to uh, gather some information and um, just didn't want it to be complicated uh, or, you know, redundant, that type of thing. Um, so, but I think that timing probably, probably would be fine. Well, I think there's that. And then there's the community meeting we had last week. Like, I don't want there to be redundancy. Um, 
So if you feel like we're asking the same questions, it's, if it's already being captured in other forums, then let's, let's cut, cut it out of this and really focus on what the information we need to collect. Well, I mean, and the good thing is, and I don't know if it's been shared with anyone yet, um, if it was sent to Chelsea yet, but um, that all the data from what the EDC is doing and the partnerships with like Lakeport is kind of doing their own efforts, sort of similar to what you're talking about here. But all that, all those responses are going to be tracked through a Google spreadsheet that would be accessible to everyone and has, you know, we've, included our business license um, list on there. So um, we have a pretty good list of Clear Lake businesses, which um, may or may not be chamber members as an example. But mm -hmm. I think just making sure that we kind of keep up on what's going on, um, responses from that would be helpful that we you know, aren't being redundant. So. Mm -hmm. You want to go down down the line a little bit more? I'll see there's more, a couple yep. more pages. Uh, the last two are just event focused. Um, what events in the last year seem to generate more buzz or activity in your business? Uh, that's an open text box. And then what events would you like to see in Clear Lake that you feel would drive business growth? Um, one, it's a, a way to see some new ideas um, and hopefully get our business community excited about some of the events that we're putting on if we can do events next year. Oh, we will. Oh, we will. <laughs> <laughs> so that is my thoughts. Um, when, Alan, when is the, the Lakeport survey going out? Well, I mean, it's kind of already started. Um, you know, they're just, we're just trying to get additional people to help contact folks on the list. Um, so some people have already been in contact. I mean, it's, it's a much simpler, um, survey. I mean, it's, uh, basically I think they're just asking people like, is there anything that you need to survive right now? Or is there anything you need to thrive and just trying to get the conversation going and see where it leads from there rather than asking a list of questions, but we'll, we'll see how it works. Okay. So it's much more, present centric than just general business centric? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's kind of, you know, the intention was more kind of COVID related. Right. And, you know, are there other things that we could be doing, whether it's policy or funding or whatever to help, you know, some of these folks. But I mean, interestingly enough, what we found initially, uh, a, a large number of people were just like, they were literally hanging up because they didn't want to talk about COVID anymore. So um, I don't know. Get it. <laughs> so I think next steps, um, and we do still have some time on this. Next steps is I will clean this up. Uh, I will um, make these into more suitable questions. And then uh, Melissa, I can share with you and we can pass around to the, the entire committee uh, in preparation for the next marketing meeting. If you have anything to add, any thoughts, any comments, let's let's chat about it then. And uh, if all is good, we can move forward. I have one question. Can we uh, ask uh, in this survey that we're doing, uh, uh, <clears throat> since Austin Park seems to be used more and there's some, and is there anything that you would add to the new uh, improvements? Uh, or to uh, some of the uh, events that we've had uh, to those to market the city? Am I, am I making sense? Since, uh, we, go ahead. If, you, if you could say it again. Uh, since we've you know, improved Austin Park and we're looking at other things, uh, how can the business community better use the public facilities? And what type of answers would you want to, would that just be an open text box, I would imagine? Yeah, I'm looking for, you know, yeah, we want to use the park for whatever, uh, you know, see if, if 
or we want to be part of a, um, a farmer's market where we can, you know, mm -hmm. be in the park on a, you know, Friday afternoon or something like that to see if there's an interest in that. Because this is going to business owners, so uh, maybe it's since the improvement of Austin Park, do you have ideas for us to better use our public facilities, something like that? Or, or, or how the business community can, can use the public facilities. Okay. Sounds good. So I will clean this up and I will share and we can discuss next meeting. Okay. Our next item is the uh, creative contents in an event promotional budget. That's probably Alan should start with that, or you know, or I think that was me again. Um, <laughs> but Alan, go right ahead. No, um, so I, I've I've uh, been able to sit in on the the TID meetings, uh, the EDC meetings, and and one of the the things that I've seen in both is there's a demand for content. Um, and I think we have a demand for content as well. I, I mentioned this last year, um, things like uh, a photographer at events, uh, promotion for our events. So like the trunk or treat, for example, um, you know, when we did the soapbox derby, the chamber was sharing, I was sharing, um, the city was sharing, but our ads were still able to break through silos. So I'm, I would love to figure out if we can have a recurring monthly budget so we can do things like, you know, so low level Facebook promotion, uh, hire a photographer who can do maybe one event a month, um, and then uh, blog content creation. Uh, I, I know the, the Lake County website, they are sponsoring the Bloom. And I think for 1200 a quarter, they're going to be getting articles, but those articles are going to be th from throughout the, the county and, and typically lean more to that side of the lake. If we could also create content about our businesses and our attractions and uh, our areas of interest, we can then seed that county website and seed our chamber website and, and just have this content available when we need it. So I wanted to talk about that and, and see what options we might have. Who, who do you think should contribute? Uh, the city, the chamber, uh, specific businesses, or who who should contribute the content, or who should contribute the funding? The funding. Um, that that's an open question. I think I think there's a need for the content. Um, I think we have content creators within our community, just like. Uh, you know, when we made the call for, for Muralist, we, we ended up with some really great mm -hmm. folks. I think that we can cultivate clearly specific content creators. Um, we just need to have the carrot for them. So what's, what's your thought on budget wise per month? Are you thinking $2,000? Are you thinking $1,000? Because I'm wondering if this month's content is brought to you by, and then a business that would have, um, decided to sponsor this month and that way we're advertising a business and they're helping us pay to produce this content which in the long run we could always continuously get sponsorship for the following years or we can say we're done we have enough content you know um whatever is, is necessary but i think that might be a good way to at least uh do an exchange rather than yeah. just a giveaway I'd, be, I'd absolutely be down for that. Um, I think depends what the budget it, is. Yeah, it, I think I was initially thinking around uh, fifteen hundred. Um, if you think Facebook promotion with one event, we should probably be in the three hundred to five hundred range. Uh, and then it really depends on how much we want to create. If we have, if we're having multiple events, do we want to cover every one? Um, and where where this content is going if it's just going to the county website and the chamber website well then we can cut down and we maybe only have to do one a quarter um so i i, I would say it's anywhere from 700 to 1500 and i guess my other question is what are these events because the city is not always the ones doing events i think the city rarely does events it's it's kind of a new thing that the city started doing events since the uh, the car race I don't know what it was called. I forgot the, the, the <laughs> soapbox race. The soapbox. I have to remember the word. Um, all I could see was Alan with the milk. 
anyways, um, <laughs> it, it's kind of a new thing for us to do, right? Well, and so well, typically I, it's nonprofits. Maybe if you want to use these services, not only are you paying for the nonprofit fee to rent the park or rent the uh, uh, senior center, but if you add such and such amount, then we'll advertise it for you and possibly also look at the sponsor to pay the rest. I don't know, just uh, yeah. another way to possibly afford that. Because I think the Lions Club would absolutely say, I'm going to give you an extra $500, advertise it for me. Um, I could just see that as being a possibility for them. No, absolutely. You know, I, I think for us as a marketing committee, we're we're looking at all types of events, right? Like the the fishing tournaments, we need we need some really great photos from that that highlight Clear Lake, that highlight our park in action. Um, the Lions events, uh, another great one. If we d decide to do farmers markets, we're going to have probably an, another organization that runs that, but they're using our facilities. We're going to have our our city hall in the backdrop. So certainly open to all of that. I just think it's important for us to have the, that, those content pieces so that we, we do need to create maps when we need to, do need to create websites. Um, we have that at our disposal. So you're, still, you're looking for a commitment to an, on, for money or what? what, uh, what, uh, what this is, is, is I, I was more posing this as a brainstorming session because I, I've seen a lot of folks, a lot of different organizations talking about it. Um, their, their need for content and they're all funding it in different ways. Um, for me, I, I see use cases for it. And so if we, if we can figure out a way to, to execute that, I think they will be used and, and they will increase the profile of our city. Okay, well, I think the idea is great. We just need to figure out how we can fund it. Yep. So, um, I think the idea that Bruno came up with is that um, you have one business promote um, one month uh, and then kind of rotate it around. So, you know, I think that's one way of doing it. Uh, I don't know how much the, um, the Chamber of Commerce is interested in, in helping out with this. Um, I don't know. So, uh, there are you know, several numerous businesses that uh, are very successful and, and, and could uh, could contribute to this you know, and bring more people into town. I think we ought to think about the hospitality segment of, of, uh, of our city. Uh, I think the idea is good. We just have to figure out what to get the money from. David? Yes. I would gladly volunteer my time to work with you and hammer out a more specific, uh, detailed program um, to present back here with uh, the concept and then tweaking that concept uh, so that way we don't have to uh, uh, discuss how to create the program here. I think uh, obviously there seems to be some uh, support for that and I think we just come back with some detailed ideas and if you want me to work with you, I'm here and you know how to reach me. Awesome. Let's do it. If I could add briefly, I mean, I'm really intrigued about the photography piece. I mean, that's something that we tried to do a little bit last year um, with some of the events with somewhat mixed success in the photographers that we had. Um, but, um, you know, who, I think, who was it? well, I mean, um, do you remember Melissa who did the state of the city stuff? Bob Manana? No, um, it was a lady that approached us and wanted to do some work, and we were. Yeah, pretty, uh, I can't remember her name. Um, but we it were, wasn't Yanlin, wasn't it that her last name? Who? Uh, Doc, I wish I could remember. She was. She did some work for the chamber for a while too. I, I don't know, but I mean, we were just. I mean, it wasn't from my perspective, at least, like. Um, what you would expect from professional level photography. Didn't have the wow factor? No. I mean, you know, I mean, David, you know, did some pretty good stuff for the Soapbox Derby. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the the picture of me, since you brought it up, I mean, that was something <laughs> that will stick in your mind for a long time. Bruno. It's classic. It's, it's in my nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, I mean, you know, this is something that um, the TID and EDC are partnering on right now, just because, I mean, the TID just released the new Visit Lake County website. And I mean, 
there's a lot of work on developing some of those um, assets that there's just, I mean, there's a lot of hotels and restaurants that we know and enjoy, but have horrible photography on their website or no photography. And yeah. so um, EDC is going to be funding um, Karen Pavoni shooting some new photography for them to help uh, for the website and that they'll have access to and stuff like that. So, I mean, developing some type of relationship with someone to be able to um, get quality stuff at some of our events and, um, and maybe help out with some of, the, I mean, that, that's one of the things that I struggle with on some of this promotion is that we talked about this probably a year ago at the marketing committee level is, you know, you know, I think the things that David have put has, have pushed has been great, but, still we have a pretty limited number of things within the city to promote that have a positive image still right um and so i i want to be careful with that too but i think there are there's got to be a lot of ways that we can help particularly through some photography and things like that so um you know i'm i don't know i mean i'm a little hesitant to jump in and commit to $1,500 a month for something, but um, I think there's got to be some room in there that we can help develop some of those assets um, and promote what we do have. Well, Bob Menena, he is, uh, he, he works for the, uh, the Record B, right? Uh, he's around, yeah. he lives in Lower Lake. I think, that he, I, I think he is pretty much retired. I don't think he does oh, much yeah. for the Record Yeah, okay. I think. I see a lot of his stuff on some flyers. He seems to be interested in documents. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 100% sure that if we believe that he can offer us the quality pictures that we're looking for, uh, that he would do it. Uh, Bob, Bob loves his community. And if we, yeah. can, if we can nail him down, I think he would love to. I just don't know if those are the type of pictures you want. Or like you said, are we prepared to get the assets that we want? Because uh, I mean... You were saying that uh, the TID is looking at taking pictures. I think that's a great way to show why you should paint your your structure rather than just leave it as is. Because let me so show you this picture versus this picture. Uh, so I think we need some. Uh, unfortunately, we need some a uh, uh, little fresh paint on some of these buildings before we start taking some pictures and stuff. The patina is not always the best. <laughs> I like that. Remodel, get a photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, next item is, uh, unless somebody has some more comments on this uh, event promotion budget, uh, we'll go to uh, decorating empty storefronts on, on Lakeshore. Well, if nobody else has, I, I didn't. I did some research because I remembered this program from a few years ago. Uh, there was a woman by the name of Linda Kelly, and she had a partner, and and they they actually did this all around the county. And it was, uh, I can still remember some of the storefronts. What they would do is they would get a hold, they would get in touch with the owner of the storefront that was vacant, and we've got quite a few, of course, on Lakeshore. And what they would do is they would go into the, they would make arrangements to get a key. They would go in and they would cover, like put a backdrop, a, a curtain or whatever in the window. And then if it had a, if it was a storefront that had like a shelf where you could put nice pictures or some giftware, something in, make it interesting. And, and I was thinking, we don't have a lot of art galleries in right now in Clear Lake, but we sure have some beautiful pictures that have been submitted. You know, the, the, the paintings, that the photography that has been done. If nothing more, those could be a start of uh, pictures in the, in the various storefronts. So that when people drive down the street or they walk down the street, they're, they're look, at least looking at something attractive. Now, uh, with the, art and storefronts, what they would of course do is these, in that, in the case of what I was talking about earlier, they actually got them from like a gallery or whatever, uh, because there were a bunch at one point, there were lots of different galleries all around the lake. So they would be, and it would, there would be a sign in the window that says, if you like, if you're interested in this photography or this uh, painting, uh, it's available at such and such a store, uh, such and such a gallery or whatever. So 
I, it's just an idea. I, I went online to see if there was anything, anybody local that was doing it and there isn't, but uh, I mean, th this is an issue all around the country that I pulled off an article on the Daytona beach and they kind of did the same thing. They, they had a lot of empty storefronts and that's exactly what they did is they decorated them and, and um, made them more pleasing to the eye as you're driving or walking by. Uh, uh, Alan, did all the photographs that were uh, at the, the uh, were made for the contents, are, they're, they're still available, right? We we'll still have them here someplace to see off, I assume. The photographs you said? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, we can start with that. Um, and the que other question is, is, have we started on the uh, commercial uh, fake uh, yes. Inspection. So, I mean, we, we know which ones are are an issue. So, mm -hmm. and we know the owners. So it's uh, just a matter of actually getting the pictures and have somebody put them in those empty storefronts. No, I mean, I think we talked about this a few times. I think we just need someone to be a champion of it and help get it done. I mean, we we can have the the list of businesses and you know pull in. Um, some art or whatever it may be just like you know I think Kelseyville Business Association does a decent job um, in Kelseyville and Lakeport Main Street Association we just need you know I think the chamber or someone to so the chamber uh, Chelsea do you think if you can uh, uh, you might be able to hook up with uh, people from CC4C that would uh, would help you with that you think you yeah, I'm that? sure they would, but what they need to do is they just need to put pictures up in all the windows in town. Yeah, or? something like that, or actually, you know, take the the brown paper off, for instance, and that building across from Griffin's, that kind of thing. That's that's what we're looking for, right? Yes. Okay, and like you basically like so, maybe. So who has this list? Um, Alan, do you have the list of the properties or a way that Barbara can get like connected to see what each one of them needs or? I will, I'll, 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 I'll volunteer to coordinate this uh, to see if uh, we can get this uh, done because I think it will spruce up the time, particularly with Christmas season coming around. Do you think C, I'm not, is CC for C the right group to? Do this well they, 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 like they want to clean up they want to clean up the town i mean this is part of cleaning up the town and they might be able to they might they might think about it with kind of a good idea i can she does a little bit around Barbara. here she did mm -hmm. a little painting around here because needed and nicole did so or nicole, nicole did yeah they, I well, think they I, would be up for I, it. I, I think that it's really more of a we need we need to see if we can't get a volunteer that has a little bit of um decorating oh, sure. I mean, okay. yeah i mean because my vision is that you you you, you don't just put a put it on the window you kind of put a curtain behind and i'm thinking especially the place across from griffin's so you put a curtain behind the 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 window you know set back a little bit and if they're able and have some decorative things paintings and things like that of interest on that table so that when people walk by they're look they're not looking at paper on the window or they're not looking into a no, no, an empty no, no. building. We, we need to, we, yeah, of course, that's- uh, I think you, you should know, talk to can... Karen about it, Dirk. <laughs> sure, I'll talk to her about it. <laughs> and I actually might be able to get some volunteers from Rotary to help with too. So I think we can do this. Uh, if that's Melissa a Rotary can, project. I, I wonder if Melissa you, or Alan, you know where those pictures are, the pictures that we had? Some time back from the photo contest yes yeah we have all of them electronically and then i mean the ones you know we've printed some of them on canvas that were in the council chambers and i mean we still have all of them so uh, okay well, let's let's see kind of do a quick um inventory of how many businesses since you also have the businesses that would need this yeah we can kind of figure out how much we need and we might have to print some more out, but uh, I'm sure that's doable. Okay. You might
Why did you? Uh, uh, Go ahead, Bruno. Okay. Um, I, I sound rude in my head, so I'm going to try and be very careful as how I say it. I would prefer efforts in marketing those empty stores than put efforts in just putting up a disguise that they might actually be full. And so I don't mind the effort that we're talking about because I think there is an impact, even though in my mind, again, rudely, I'm thinking that some stores that are open can use some pictures in the front too. But what if we did a dual effort? At one side, we, if we're going to get permission to go inside a place, that means we got contact with the owners, right? Because you have to get permission. You can't just, obviously, you can't break in or whatever. Well, mm -hmm. if we have their permission, can we look at putting the list together of the, this is available for lease and from the city perspective or the Lake EDC perspective or whatever other perspective to advertise it for free on on any kind of portal that we have available to say, we don't want this to be artwork in a window. We want this to be a real store that's open for people to go inside. Cause I think it's a missed opportunity if all we're doing is going and do, doing some, some window disguise. I, 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 I agree, but there's another part of retailing that if you see empty storefronts, empty storefronts, boarded up storefronts, you don't want to be next to that anyway. So if you want to have an interest in the store next to the one that's, you know, both stores are empty and they both look like they're cardboarded out, uh, that's not good marketing for the city itself. So, but I'm not, I'm uh, not you have saying, to do both. You I'm not do saying both. don't do uh, the idea that Stephanie brought. I'm saying it's a missed opportunity if we don't help out with the marketing to get more investors in our community. Uh, if we're already going to have access to the property, let's make sure we also say we'll help you in many ways and not just help us by making it look better for people walking through. Okay, Chelsea, I, I agree, Bruno. Yeah, like do basically do a combination of the two. So what, like think about the cities almost or even Santa Rosa when you go to the plaza or some, even the mall, they have a big thing saying, do you want this storefront? It's available, but they'll have like a picture of the mall or something where it's connected to the business. So maybe if we have like a picture of Mount Kanaka in the background, almost like a fuzzy, like, you know how you do a poster? So it's got like the background picture. And then on the front, it could say, are you interested in this business? You know, this is a uh, Lake County opportunity for you in the, the beautiful part of Clear Lake, like something like that. So then it, still has that artistic beauty of Lake County and gives you that idea, but it's also doing an advertisement. Okay, like I, I will work on that because I kind of like to do that. And I have a good pitch. It should just say, come to Clear Lake. It's better than Lakeport. <laughs> <laughs> we know that. We have All a right, department next. store. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> it's <very> competitive. <laughs> okay, uh, installation on public art fish displays. So I do not have an update from uh, Martha. I know that they are working on that, and I will definitely have an update for you next time. I provided all of the money uh, for the um, artists to begin and uh, they are working on it. I did make a request which was passed on to take pictures like every other day or every day that they work on it. So eventually we can get some kind of uh, uh, progression uh, video to show how the art came together. See, those are those kind of pictures. What David is looking for, these are the kind of pictures we can put in these empty storefronts. All that stuff can be used. Mm -hmm. So that's all I have on that one. I, I apologize for not having more. Okay, uh, next one, discussion. Maybe we can put a screen up and play Bruno's um, video. No, stop it, stop it. I, I think that's a great idea. We need to, we need to do that. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put Alan's face over my face. <laughs> have him floating Market, around in the background. Marketing and rebranding to improve the city's image. Next so, item. Uh, on this item, this was asked for by uh, Vice Chair Overton, and she is not here today. Okay. 
I think all these items that we talk about is all about city image. So, so can, can I can I offer an idea on this topic? Uh, I think we did a fabulous job on the city logo. Tina, I see you laughing at me. You might have a mask over your face, but <laughs> I see you. Um, <laughs> I, we did a really fabulous job as far as our city logo. I think it is absolutely an attractive logo. It, it just says positive vibes. Like just looking at it makes me feel good. Um, and, and I think just that whole setup that we went through, the new motto, the new everything uh, was great. What, what if we added to that? We don't have a city flag. What if we created a city flag that maybe can fly underneath that huge flag on the flagpole in Austin Park? Uh, it doesn't have to be as big because that would be weird. Uh, but I mean, we, we have some opportunities of things we don't have that other cities do have. And so uh, that's one way to uh, enhance it and maybe ask some of our local shopping centers who may already have a flagpole to add it in there. Uh, maybe it's something we can add to the front where it says, welcome to the city of Clear Lake and add a flagpole there. Flagpoles aren't that expensive. Um, and, and so poss possibility. Kelsey, you had your hand up. Oh, no, I was waving. I was just raising my hand like I agree. I would be a business that would have one. <laughs> I, yeah. you know, you could sell them at home, too. I mean, there's probably plenty of people who would, you know, we could sell them here at the visitor center because then they would have them on their boats and other stuff like that, you know. So this is just a promotional item that we need to take our logo and put it on a flag. That's well, especially since uh, Clear Lake, the lake uh, is the number one bass fishing in the country. Not yeah, just- you might, you might be able to sell those uh, at the bass tournaments. There you go. You do little tiny ones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if, if I could add something on this, I mean, I see the the, logo that was created as like the city seal um but we don't really have um, a sort of clear lake brand or entity as a destination and this is something that is supposed to come out of the the downtown project that we started is they're supposed to actually help us create um like a signage plan and um sort of a brand for um that so i think um that's something that we should bring back and you know talk with the committee about but i think we're kind of on that same track um already and hopefully they'll come with some good stuff that we can we can leverage because i mean you know i i like the the seal too but i think it would be ideal to have something that didn't just represent the city organization itself really and, and and to be honest even when i said city flag my intention was not to just simply slap the logo on a flag and call it good i think we have opportunities to create more imagery uh that brings more attraction and attention so the the logo was created through a contest correct sure was so and how much did that cost alan do you remember or tina or Melissa? It was before my time i don't know i believe joyce paid the winner $250? Yeah, I think that's right. So we'll I just, uh, we'll, Joyce will pay the next person $250. She's <laughs> not here to say no, so. I, I think actually this could be more a promotional item that uh, you could sell uh, at the chamber, you know, prepare flags or two different sizes and, and uh, sell them and it could pay for itself, but somebody has to put the money up first. So. Again, that, that shouldn't be an issue. I mean, it's, uh, it's like, uh, I used to live in the, the city of Sonoma, Sonoma Valley, and it's also very well known as the Bear Flag Republic, and they still yeah. sell that brand heavily out there. And we have a large history that we could rebrand and sell to people. And, and uh, just to let you know, Martha's group has already approached me for redoing the flags for the county because the flag is just horrendous and old and I don't even know what it looks like because it looks so tattered up up there. Uh, but they're interested in becoming a part of that. And so we already have a group of artists who are interested in doing something re related to that. Good. Cool. So how can we get this off the ground, Alan? You want to wait till those uh, the retail strategies comes up with something or do you want to... Our own on it. That would be my request, yes. 
Okay, we'll wait till they put they have their input in it. It won't be that long. Okay. And and maybe wait for Joyce to put input before we hijack her uh, agenda item. <laughs> Uh, okay, the next item is art at the state park. So I, I requested uh, Melissa put this on the agenda. Um, I was, uh, I'm still believing that Phil Harris is uh, going to receive a new uh, skate park sitting area because the sitting area over there is absolute crap. It's old. It just gets a brand new fresh coat of paint, but it's not even the best. Uh, it's, it's just good enough. And so uh, it's kind of falling apart. Uh, Phil was gonna, is already ordering something brand new. I was gonna help him install it. I don't know if Alan needs to cover his ears for any of that stuff. Um, but as I'm thinking about it, I, I, the park, while great, it's probably the most active youth area that we have other than the basketball courts. It's also very dull Soviet Union gray. And it would be really nice if we can get some color on there. And I know from going to many other skate parks, typically there's graffiti all over and like organized graffiti. And so I was looking at the, uh, the side of the ramps and if we can maybe use those as a canvas for putting up some sort of murals. So I spoke with uh, Michael and Violet Devine and uh, I pitched them the idea. Um, I told them that there's only one thing that has to be there, and I want a picture of Andy Johnson. Uh, it, it is called the Andy Johnson BMX Skate Park. I have a picture of him on a skateboard, and I want that to be repainted in some abstract way or maybe a photorealistic way uh, in memory of uh, who the park is named after. And then, you know, in nice lettering, the name of the park there too. Uh, but after that, I was going to give Michael and Violet just a complete creative uh, design of what it is that they would do. Michael came back with, he will do the Andy Johnson part, but the rest, he wants the kids who go to the skate park to take ownership, and he wants to help them paint their mural or their uh, interpretation of what needs to be there. Uh, so we haven't moved on any of this. I wanted to bring it past this board since you've all been involved with every single mural that's happened. I wanted to get the approval, uh, kind of give you the idea of what was uh, out there. Um, there's no uh, specific of what the art will look like, but we can get it drawn out and then submitted here and then approved. And then the kids can finish it up <laughs> with the help of Michael and uh, Violet Devine to uh, help them. And if you guys remember through this same committee, we did the wildlife murals that ages 10 all the way to what, 15, I think it was. And it was fabulous artwork. It was not B-rated stuff. It, it's still up in our community and it looks great. So, and I'm thinking that it'll make the kids who go to the skate park really want to take care of the skate park that much more. So uh, I have a- They'll have owner. Yeah, exactly. They'll have ownership. I have a donor. Uh, he wanted to help out with the fish. I told him I had already gotten all the money for the fish. I talked to him about the skate park. He's always involved with kids, youth sports. So he's ready to give me all the money that we need to make that happen. Uh, so if you tell me everything is good, my next steps would be to meet with Michael and Violet at the skate park. I would call up some of the old timers that are still seen as like the heroes of the skate park. Uh, and they would get access to all the new cup, new kids that are out there because they all know each other. Uh, I've kind of not been at the skate park for a while. So I don't really know anymore who's there, who's not. Uh, so if we can get the old timers that are being respected by the little kids and the little kids and kind of come together and have a conversation, um, then we might be able to figure out who's truly interested in being a part of this art project uh, and who wants to take it on. And then from there, we can start submitting some uh, design ideas that this board would uh, approve or not approve. I, I, I'm, I'm all for it. It sounds great to me, so. so me too. There are uh, two families who would I, love to I help already. Think, nice. I think the only thing you probably have to have some, you know, if there are a bunch of kids and stuff involved that they need to deal with some liability issues or something. I'm not sure. If they can skateboard for free without a signature, they can paint. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sure they'll want to, you know, it, it's always something fun. They'll just show up and want to do it. Something extra. But, Melissa has her hand up. 
So I think that we can make it super easy. Uh, we have an online waiver that we can just have the parents who are ultimately involved in the project sign. Um, it should be fairly simple and right. online, just like we're right. doing for trunk or treat. Okay. Perfect. Sounds good. Uh, next item is uh, upcoming events. Trunk or treat, Christmas parade, 2021 fishing tournaments and marketing of future events. Uh, let's talk How many cards first. do we have? Um, I think we're at like 12 now. Yeah, I will take 12. I would have taken yeah. 10. Yeah. Great news. Parts. We have a bunch of volunteers to do traffic control and stuff too. Not 15, but we're getting there. All right, I got a couple more, so yeah. Okay. No, we're doing great. Yeah, good. Yeah, we're still a week and a half out too, so yeah. I think so one I last social push and, and we'll be able to get some action. Are, are we, Is how is this being, uh, how is Trunk or Treat being uh, out there <clears throat> in the, how are people finding out about it? A press release just went out not too long ago from Melissa. <laughs> Uh, okay. it's, been, it's been talked about during the council meeting. So at least if anybody's paying attention to that, they know what's going on. Uh, Dr. Pace actually mentions it all the time when he's doing an update as well for COVID-19, which a lot of people are actually paying attention to that. Um, <laughs> and also there's been a big social media push uh, to make sure everybody is aware. I, I think it's going to be a very high participant uh, activity. I was just... I was just going to say that because I heard that <laughs> all of Hidden Valley is coming our way. No. And I'm sure that Lake Park will be here. The, 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 they're still trick-or-treating, possibly. They are allowing trick-or-treating there. So I know a lot of families are either just staying home down there. Um, Georgette and I, with the Lake County Chamber, she and I have been connecting and keeping up on any extra little updates. She just got another one for another little event in Kelseyville. Um, so she and I have both been compiling our own setup, so they should be going out probably this week or next week. Um, I mean, they're both pretty much done. So we have almost all the events and there's a good amount all over Lake County. So I think yeah. this year we're actually going to be okay. Um, good. with the spread I think out, there's like so. six, seven or eight different activities <laughs> all happening at the same time. Yeah, and the haunted house over in the Oaks, they've already started setting it up. So, you know, it's, it's already a good movement. If you if you're Great. concerned about getting additional, uh, you know the the school district is what uh, Rotary used to advertise our Christmas dinner stuff uh, is another way. So you need to talk to Becky. I think Tina's That's been uh, going to uh, KUSD to look for uh, volunteers as well. Okay. Uh, right. And if I may, you mentioned fish tournaments. Um, and, and I guess I'll ask Alan what he thinks the best way to go is. So uh, this year we stole a couple fishing tournaments from Canoc Di Vista because Canoc Di Vista uh, shut down. Um, both uh, Russ Kramer and I went to greet the uh, anglers during the FLW, uh, which is supposed to be one of the biggest national tournaments uh, for bass fishing. And our intention was to walk in and say, what can we do to make sure you come here again next year instead of going back to Canocti Vista when they open up? Um, and he, he actually started the conversation with us rather than us with him. Um, a lot of people are a bit upset with the last minute changes that Canocti Vista made, especially when um, the Fish and Wildlife was still handing out permits to say you can do these tournaments, but yet Canocti Vista shut down. Uh, and they were really, really happy that the city was friendly and welcoming and allowed them to come here and do their thing. Granted, they didn't have the large tournament that they typically have. Typically they have maybe 300 or more anglers. They had, a, I think they were, sorry, 150 minimum uh, boats, which has two anglers in there. So it's typically 300 anglers. Uh, I think there was only about 75 or 72 that day, um, but it was a four day tournament, which those are the types of tournaments we're actually going to see a return versus a one day tournament where they come in early in the morning and they leave and never really ha hanging out, no TOT, no, no sales tax, no nothing. So uh, I received from Gary Mon Mangrass, Madgrass, what? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. 
uh, I received a economic uh, report on what happens with his tournaments that he can prove to us he can bring to the city of Clear Lake on an annual basis. So I don't know if that's something that Alan wants to sit down uh, with me and Russ to look over first and then maybe bring here or uh, bring here right away and see how it is that we can maybe meet some of their needs in order to make sure that it's a mutual relationship and not just a giveaway. Or just as we were talking about with David's idea, what, what if we got the tournament sponsored uh, by some of the local folks? And I'm sure Eric Scalar would be more than happy to pay for the entire thing if we wanted him to. But um, I, we, I think we need to talk about it to make sure we don't miss that opportunity because I, I do believe that especially the three or four day tournaments do have a benefit for the city. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think that's if any more turn, uh, marketing things. Uh, we, I'm looking at the uh, uh, future event, uh, Christmas break, we haven't talked about yet. Chelsea, it's going to happen. That's your baby. Christmas parade. That's oh, I, know that we're, I know we're trying to. Um, I don't know. I know we'd all been sort of talking about it a little bit last time. Um, our uh, board was not able to meet last week. So I know that we still sort of wanted to try to push for parade. I don't know how everyone feels still because last time we talked, we were, we were still wavering in the purple. Um, I know we felt that we might be able to do enough social distance wise because it's along Lakeshore. So the only thing I know of right now is definitely trying to go in and make sure the businesses are getting prepared for decorating for Christmas. I want to do that um, like beginning of November to mid November. Uh, just check in and see if they need anything. Um, I know Joyce had mentioned to me too that she's got a lot of extra Christmas decorations and you know many people probably do. So if they want extras, maybe we can help a few businesses if they, they aren't able to decorate themselves. Um, and like we've mentioned before, if there's empty storefronts, you know, maybe put some tinsel or some little Christmas lights, make it look nice, even if we can't do a parade. Um, but that's where we're at right now for Christmas. I, I don't see any reason why we can't have a parade, especially as we talked about it last time, if people stay in their cars and we allow them to park in the no parking zone, uh, it's just going to be a one way for the uh, parade to go through so they don't need both lanes. It'll be a matter of making sure that the way we ask them to park is going to be safe in the long run. Um, but I think that if we do that and we can figure out the logistics for that, then there's no reason. The people in the car are either from the same household or they were already hanging out before they came and they're not mingling with anyone else from a different car either. Um, so if that's what we do, there's really no reason to say it can't happen no matter what we're, what tier we're in. Well, and, and I think too, I totally agree with that. There's spacing to that point, but on the, and also the people who are seeing it, we could simply get some chalk and mark off areas. And that, and that would just be simply, people would be told if you're in this area, just like you do in the grocery store. I mean, you're in, you're in your, cause I know these parades, how they go over all the years. People are very territorial. A family uh, that wants to watch the parade, they're all together and they don't want anybody else sitting close to them. So, I mean, and that's just in an, in an everyday time. So I don't see any reason why the parade cannot go. Um, the city usually does the lighting of the tree and the visit with Santa. I assume the visit with Santa wouldn't go, but we could still light a tree, correct? Alan is shaking his head, yes. Alan okay. plans to light a tree. <laughs> <laughs> I think yep. we're good for now for that discussion so we could always, you know, start prepping for, I guess, should I, should I start sending out parade forms to start getting companies prepared? Uh, or do you guys think more, I should do it now, but, you know, or beginning, do we try to let them focus more on Halloween and do it like right after? I, I think right, right now. I would start right now. Yeah. Yeah, no, right no, now? Late, no later than November 1st is what I would yeah. say. Okay, maybe I'll just start getting things together and we'll start trickling it out uh, next week. Um, and then I'll connect with Tina on getting 
It's Tina, right? Who I contact for information or is it Melissa? I remember which one helps with, um, but making sure that we're gonna have like the permits we need and start setting up what's needed. Either one of us. Okay. It's my first year, but I know there's quite a, a good little layout from previous years and I've got plenty of experience helping out with parades in the past from small towns. So it's pretty much similar. <laughs> Got to see where you got to put the giant float and let the judges sit down. <laughs> it looks like we're at the uh, item of future agenda items. Anybody has any future agenda items? If not. Uh, one, one thing, uh, Mr. Chair, we do have a member of the public. It's probably appropriate to ask if there's any public comment. Sure. Any public comment? I was unaware there was anybody. Please identify yourself and... Uh, see what and you have to say. Uh, we don't have any. Oh, you you lost scared them. them off. I guess. Alrighty. Oh, there we Hi, go. Hi, Lisa. Lisa. You're up, Lisa. Oh. You're, 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 you don't seem to be muted, but we don't hear anything. Like your microphone's not working. Okay, is that better? There you go. That's it. You're on. All right. No public comment. Thank you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, come on. Now we're going to let you in and you don't have anything to say. Come on. Just say something. But always good to see you, Lisa. Uh, why don't you tell us real quick about your one team, one dream um, project? Me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm one of the 15 finalists for one team, one dream. And um, the project is like a shark tank. They, are call it, they call it Hands Up Lake County. But I think mostly you're just hearing one team, one dream. Uh, so on Saturday, we had a week ago Saturday, we had a workshop and I participated remotely. Many people were on site and we went through some training and each of us participants gave a three minute um, introduction about our business. And um, our next step is to participate on October 31st and present to do our uh, 15 minute pitch with a slideshow to judges and then that will be called and by um, those six will then participate in December for the final. So my pitch is called Clear Lake Boat Rental and we will be renting small 14 foot aluminum outboards here at camp, which is something we've done in the past but we haven't done it for a few years. And nobody in Lake County um, rents these small, small boats. It, they'll be cheap and cheerful relative to the, what's currently in the market. The current players are Disney Water Sports up in Lakeport. They have an amazing assortment, um, beautiful service. They get great reviews, beautiful boats. It's in Lakeport, which is half an hour away from Clear Lake. And they are they can be pricey. They, they, they are a very good value. So I'm not saying they're expensive, but it's... Um, at a certain level that I'm not gonna participate in. And then we also send guests to the Logic Blue Lakes because again, they have a broad um, assortment of really cool electric boats. And that's a whole different experience, you know, in the cold deep lake versus our warm shallow lake. And so when we think about good, better, best, we'll be in the good category because we'll have a very limited assortment. We'll just have one kind of boat plus the kayak, so two, and then, um, they'll be much less, they'll be half the price of what Disney and Logic Blue Lakes offers. So. Can, can I, at least I have, I have, I have, that's a great idea. We were, uh, we, we spent some time in Fort Bragg and they actually have a, uh, an electric um, boat that takes people around for a, a, a small fee and uh, the people have a glass of wine and they get a tour of the whole harbor of, uh, of Fort Bragg. Uh, I thought it was an amazing, in, a, in a, a small electric boat that holds maybe six people, maybe eight, I'm not quite sure how many. I don't know if anybody else has seen it, but it's pretty, uh, pretty awesome. I love uh, that idea too. So that is on my growth plan. I want to buy an 18 foot pontoon boat. I know exactly what I want. 
and then I need to get a captain's license or a pilot's license, and then I can charge people to take them out on the creek for a creek cruise. Yeah, it, it, this one was an electric boat, and it was uh, you know a, more of a gondola type of style, and it was it was really cool. Those are neat. Yeah, that yeah. the all electric boats are duffies up at um, Lodge of Blue Lakes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Lisa, cool. were, were there any other Clear Lake folks in that program? Uh, yes, lamb printing. Um, Lo Lake County Mobility Services. I don't know who that is, though, but that's. Oh, uh, isn't that um, Russ Kramer? Is on that? Uh, is that Lynx? No, I don't. I don't. No, that's not it. That's a different. But there's there's videos and stuff on the One Dream One Team One Dream website, so I need to check those out. But I just got an email from them earlier letting us know about the three clear lake finalists so cool well, well done congratulations job. awesome awesome anybody else has anything to add to this meeting if not we're adjourned thank you all for joining take care bye-bye hey, hey, hey melissa and bruno yes can i grab you for two seconds yeah sure you've got me what path do you want them to go down? So uh, we want them to go down the center on the right. And then up north. And then all the way north to that parking lot exit or the parking lot. And then boom, then they can go into the left.